Dive into the shallow end of pop culture and into the deep end of fashion with It's Not That Serious, the podcast. I'm Andrea. And I'm Lena. And we're coming to you every week for a lighthearted take on celebrities, fashion trends, and the belief that life is best lived with a touch of humor. It's not just a podcast. It's your VIP pass to a world where seriousness takes a backseat to glam, gossip, and giggles. Hi, Diva Queens. Hello, our favorite Diva Queens. Hello, how are you? Um, this is Andrea. And this is Lena. And this is It's, it's not, not That, that serious, serious Weekly, weekly the, the Podcast. podcast. Dun, dun. <laughs> um, we're back again as we are back every week and we will be back every week. How was your week, Lena? Um, my week was cool. Uh, I went to the Miami Open one of the days. That Ooh, was fun. Tennis girl. Tennis girl for life. I'm um, just kidding. I can't rep too hard because uh, I just started like two years ago. Um, but yeah, that was cool. The grounds were really special. You know, they had a lot of cute little like restaurant activations and they had like a little kids court too. They had like a, you know, like a camp day for the kids also. Um, it was at the at Hard Rock Stadium. Oh, nice. Yeah. They do. They build out like really crazy stuff over there. Yeah. It was cool. I, I'll, I'll show you videos. Um, I ate good, had some drinks. Saw the match. It was like the finals. It was also amazing because it was comped. Uh, shout out to... Free is S- for me. If it's free, it's for me. Shout out to Slice Girls Tennis Club for having me as well. I played tennis with my boyfriend. He is now asking me to play tennis with him, which I'm very, very excited about. That's cool. I finally got him start? to play tennis with oh, me. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, he, he's an athlete, so he just picks it up and is able to play. He's naturally gifted. Yes. He's <laughs> one of God's favorites. I still have time off. If anybody wants to hire me for a job, I am now available. <laughs> I'm no longer on vacation. Um, yeah. What about you? Um, this week... I went to Palm Angels, like renovated their space that they have in um, Design District. And they just officially like reopened. So they had their opening party there. And um, one of my friends is the store director. So I was like, let me show some support. You were bipping and bopping around the Design District? Girl, I always be bipping and bopping around the Design (laughs) District. You can catch me on 39th Street, baby. (laughs) All day. She's a 39th Street shouty. (laughs) Um, But it's so funny going to these Miami events because it's like always the usual suspects. It's like People have nothing else to do but just go to every event. Yeah. Like, just go to every store opening. For every free, like Prosecco. Yeah. They were serving Casamigos at this event. Oh. But they like kind of made a mistake and they put they didn't have like a bar at the front and the stores kind of set up like a tunnel. So all the servers are coming out of the back. And the DJs were like in the middle room and then there was a front room. So all the people were like huddled in the middle room by the DJs. The music was like fire. It was really good. I think the DJs called like two cats or something. And um, everyone in the middle room was just taking all the drinks. So like drinks weren't circulating at all. It was two floors. My friends and I found like a little corner, like right by where the servers were coming, were coming out, out of. Yeah. <laughs> There's like it's a like fitting the room. first drinks. We literally just hid in there and like we made friends with the servers. We're like, hey, hey, hey. And like my friends are like much heavier drinkers than I am. So they're ordering like double shots of Casamigos for like each of us. I'm not f-ing drinking that because I had to drive home. So I had to take it. And then they were like hiding in the corner, dumping all their drinks into one glass and just straight up drinking. <laughs> just straight Casamigos. Just straight Casamigos. That's how I am with hors d'oeuvres. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will meet the server at the kitchen door. Like, oh, I'm 
can I have one? <laughs> <laughs> I would normally be like that, but the, the food was like, ugh, it was kind of like giving bird food. I was mm. like, I need something. I have not eaten dinner yet. Okay. Need like sustenance. I need sustenance. Um, but yeah, so that was cool. I haven't been to a, an event in a minute. Tell me about how you didn't wear a bra. I was in shock. Oh my God. <laughs> That's crazy. That's Ooh, so me. crazy. <laughs> Andrea sent me a text message and was like, you would be so proud of me. I'm like, why? She's like, I'm not wearing a bra to this event. To which you were like, prove it. I was like, prove <laughs> it. I don't believe you. And to my delight, I got a photo of Andrea in a skimpy top with no bra. I like. I was so excited. <laughs> but I, I uh, before we left to the event, I took my friends were like, you cannot wear a bra with this top. Like <laughs> I have my normal bra. I can't bra. believe you tried to wear a bra with that top. I wear my bra. It has like skinny, skinny straps and like all asymmetrical. You could just see the whole bra. And so I took my bra off and I had my friend take that picture that you saw to and make sure it wasn't bra seen. in her hand. <laughs> we'll have to like add the picture into the carousel this week because it's me standing. You know, when you like ask your boyfriend to take a picture of you and you're like derpy. Yeah. So it was like me derpy holding my bra <laughs> to make sure my nipples weren't showing. Um, but then I got there and it was cold. So I put my sweater on anyway. I was wondering because you posted something and I was like, this <laughs> ended up in a cardigan. <laughs> You know how I be. You know what? This face card doesn't decline, baby. I, they, it, my face can do the heavy lifting. I don't have to show these tatas. <laughs> you might be right. You know, you might be right. But uh, I just laughed because her, she sends me a picture standing there with her bra in her hand. And I'm like, I do not believe that she tried to wear her bra with this skimpy top that was like elastic, like skinnier than a spaghetti. <laughs> You know how I be in my bra. <laughs> I saw like, do you ever in Miami, I feel like this happens. Or if you in, live in LA or New York, probably like when you run into influencers that you actually follow like online, but like in real life. And then you see them. There's this one influencer I follow. She's like, I guess a fitness influencer. She's Colombian. I'll have to show you her. And um, oh my God, she's like 12 feet shorter than what I imagine how she like appears Everyone's always shorter yeah I was yeah. like oh my god you're like four foot eleven girl oh. I was just like damn yeah I always <laughs> I also find it funny when like well actually there's a whole genre of like content with this now but I find it funny when you see an influencer in the wild and they're just like super basic but they're like a maximalist the fashion influencer oh is that a thing where they calling out those maximalist <laughs> girls that they don't actually wear that <laughs> out in public yes i follow a ton of those girls on tiktok yeah. oh i knew it was bullshit yeah and then they'll be like well some of them will even just call themselves out like uh reels versus real life mm. you know like how how you would edit that maximalist outfit for like an real life moment yeah you know because I'm like, yeah, these girls aren't going out in these triple stack platforms and and tutu and like layered tutus, literal and doll part <laughs> like arms and legs, yeah. earrings and stuff. I can think of like three that I follow like specifically. Same with all them colors. You're not wearing all them colors in real life. No, no. <laughs> I remember there's one girl that she's like, today I'm gonna try to style jeans try to style jeans yeah and she's like oh, it's so uncomfortable like i really don't know what i'm doing <laughs> oh my god i just this is so weird for me i'm like girl give it a rest you put your jeans on and go to Publix like the rest of us right be normal i know you're not wearing simone rocha to go like go grocery shopping no i wish i could though i mean i would I mean, I would. <laughs> no, I, I, we've talked about this before. Like, okay, it's all fun and games until you're out in the wild and you're getting all this attention. Yeah. And you have and to like, like I want to go home. I want to go home. I don't want to be looked at. Yeah. Um, okay. The internet's been going like, this is just like cash talk. We're not going to get super deep into it. But, um, you know, I, I would be remiss to not mention the, the like cancelification of Jennifer Lopez on the internet this last couple of weeks. Oh, everyone's just hating her. Hating. I love all these They've people. They've had enough. Enough. People coming out of the woodworks like 
I worked at a movie theater and Jennifer Lopez is a <laughs> I went to high school with her and guess what? She's a <laughs> And like all these people, I worked on the Amazon documentary and guess what? She's a <laughs> <laughs> Um and I work in her store and I can confirm she's a, <laughs> she's a weird. <laughs> she's Weird. Like the thing is, I cannot even confirm or deny if she's a because you can't. Her handlers don't even let you get close enough to even. She's the type like you cannot look her in the face. Yeah, and like that's how Nicki Minaj is. You um, can't look her in the eyeballs. B B with a capital B. Yeah. Um, and then. Jennifer Lopez ended up having to, like, all these news reports came out. She canceled a bunch of her tour dates for the This Is Me Now tour. And then she rebranded the tour to the Greatest Hits tour. She said, this is me live. This is me live. It's no longer This Is Me Now. This is This Is Me Live. And I'm going to play throwback hits. Um, because nobody really, I guess, listened to This Is Me Now. I, I didn't think, I, I didn't. Everyone's saying that the new the new saying is all dreams, no limits. What's that? That's from, that's from her video when she's like, when I have my hair out like this, it reminds me, oh. when, I, <laughs> it reminds me when I was a so crazy down, girl in the Bronx. She goes, crazy little girl in the Bronx, 16. Running up and down the block. All dreams, no limits or no regrets, something like that. I don't know. It's craziness. I like that she said crazy little girl and then she said 16. Crazy little crazy. Crazy little girl. Six. I was crazy little girl, 26. <laughs> um, all this and she's trying to act mad relatable. And then all these paparazzi pictures came out with her like looking at townhouses in Manhattan to the tune of like 10 million, 16 million and her like Croc Birkins. That woman cannot say no to a Croc Birkin. Yeah, she loves Croc Birkins. That's like her jam. Whatever. Don't be relatable. I hate, I don't know. I think it's like the wishy-washy. That's annoying. Like Gwyneth Paltrow, I respect that she has never tried it. She's like, I'm not going to try to make for people who make $40,000 a year. She's literally said that before. She said, I'm not going to do it because I don't know what that's like. I never lived that life, babe. Can't mm -hmm. relate. Literally, I can't relate. I said, okay. 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 <laughs> okay, girly. Uh, all right. You know, there was like mad collabs, mad endorsements, mad deals this week. Lots of deals. Lots of deals being penned. We actually had to like kind of edit down the list because like there was a lot of collabs to be collabed. Mm -hmm. um, but there was a couple like interesting ones. And like as far as like fashion goes, um, Dapper Dan was announced as Sherwin-Williams creative director. Um, which I thought that was really cool. And he's turning 80 this year and it's his first time being appointed as a creative, oh, creative director. director. So I just thought that's like, you know what? Don't ever like stop chasing like whatever like motivates you. Yeah. But also what a shame on it fashion. It is a shame. Shame on fashion. Shame on fashion for, I mean, honestly, for so long kind of stealing his ideas and and trying to like take him down and trying too. to take him down for being a creative um yeah he says never once was i offered the position of creative director that's what makes this one so special so important um i thought it was interesting that they backwards engineered like their marketing plan they were like, what's the color that sells the least? Yes, I like have this whole, since 2011, Sherwin-Williams has declared its color of the year. In 2024, it takes a new approach. The loneliest color is the name of the collection, is the least tinted in its lineup. For context, millions of gallons of Sherwin-Williams top colors are tinted each year. In the last 14 years, Kingdom Gold SW6698 has been tinted only 11,000 times total. The Dapper Dan-led uh, campaign is meant to spotlight the color that so many people have overlooked. Uh, and then 
Dapper Dan was quoted saying, kingdom gold represents achievement, accomplishment, going from zero to hero. It's like being a rapper. Until you have a gold chain, you're not even an official rapper. And the thicker the chain, the bigger the rapper. So kingdom gold represents an elevation for me. It's hard to imagine that that it's the least tinted color. Everybody has something gold. Um, I thought also, you know, for me, I'm like, I like this mustard yellow. Yeah, it's kind of mustardy. It's like a mustard yellowish. Um, like I've I've never kind of been against that color. No. Um, but I also I like the way that he obviously is still representing Harlem. Um and I had a little blurb for people that weren't like familiar with Dapper Dan. Um, Daniel Day, known as Dapper Dan, is a Harlem couturier known for the king of knockoffs. He made his name in the late 80s and 90s as the tailor who provided rap culture with its signature gangster-inspired style, reworking traditional luxury house products to outfit a slew of emerging hip-hop stars, athletes, and gamblers. And Dapper Dan was really the person that created like logo mania as like a look. Um, along with the paint as itself, he created like, there's a few one of one, it's like eight one of one pieces, um, like clothing pieces that will be for sale. Yeah. And they're actually going to be up for auction. And I think there, it's going to be like a month of auctions and Sherwin Williams is, uh, donating the money, donating, donating the proceeds to, not make a wish. Here we go. It was- Habitat for Humanity with a minimum contribution of $100,000. A portion of the proceeds will also support organization organizations in Dapper Dan's hometown of Harlem, New York. Yeah. I like that. Me too. I think that's cool. Cause- and the pieces themselves, I mean, there are very typical Dapper Dan. There's a bomber. Um, there's a track jacket. There's like some track pants. Uh, there's a vest, like a kind of shearling lined vest. Yeah. The Um, campaign was, um, shot by Nolis Anderson, who's also, um, a black photographer based out of Chicago, Chicago based photographer. Yeah. Who would have known like Sherwin Williams was going to be more innovative than the actual fashion industry to appoint a person of color, a person of color, Dapper Dan and Dapper Dan legendary, you know, Iconic streetwear designer. Um, literally probably even the beginning of just like streetwear becoming street. If anyone listening wants more information or to like kind of get the gist of his vibe, there's like so many documentaries around mm-hmm. him. I liked his Gap collab was really cool as well. I like Gap collabs in general. In general, Yeah. I think um, I read that Gap has a lot of um, people of color on their creative team, hmm. which I think is like smart. Yeah. Obviously, because people of color mm-hmm. create the culture. <laughs> yes. Beauty collab of the world. Serena Williams has said goodbye to tennis and she has said hello to sport proof makeup. With her makeup line, Win W Y N Beauty. And it's available at Ulta. Um, I love the packaging. The packaging is so cute. So, like, the packaging is a kind of neon green, uh, reminiscent of tennis balls. And there's a lip serum that's like pink. So, like, neon green and pink. I've always loved that color combination. And it's um, basically kind of like sport proof makeup with winning performance. And it's, they're saying it's like skincare powered makeup. So the tints have um, ultra hydrating um, formulas. There's also like SPF in, um, in the skin stuff. And there's like a huge shade range, which like, honestly, that's just like barrier for entry for a beauty brand at this point. In a post Fenty world, I would be interested to see um, kind of like how Skims has like um, launched in like such a bigger way that um, Kim was like dressing Olympians um, in Skims. Wouldn't that be interesting if when 
beauty started like providing like makeup and stuff for like the Olympians, like the Olympic. Yeah, that would be that would be incredible. I mean, that would be the deal of a century. Um, she stated how she's always been into beauty, but that, you know, with being on the court and stuff, by the time you're done with your with your matches and, the, and let's say you won your match, you have 15 minutes to get ready for press and that includes like taking off your taping and showering and all that stuff. So she kind of based the line around what would be the um, the best products that would make her presentable like the quickest, which I think is pretty smart. Like, I don't know how minimal the the actual product line is, or how many pieces she came out with, but... Um, the range is kind of, I mean, it has like all the um, basics, right? It has like... Lip gloss, lipstick, lip oil, um, skin tint, eyebrow, mascara. I would be interested in the um, in the mascara. Um, I mean, the Miami girlies might eat this up because you know in Miami the girls go to the girls go to the gym with the makeup. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. The you makeup know, and the mascara. I've seen girls. <laughs> I've seen girls in hot. Pilates with mascara on just dying because so, that uh, let me tell you you go to hot Pilates with mascara on you might be blind by the time you get out mm-hmm. I've made the mistake um no I've had just plain sweat blind me at the gym just sweat right <laughs> <laughs> um I anytime I go to the gym after work I literally feel like a loser because like I have my makeup on still because I'm coming straight from work and right. I feel like people are like looking at me like so you're such a f- try hard, yeah. but it's like, I'm not going to take my makeup off. Yeah, I'm guilty. I'm not going to a gym that I like know people that like people will see me like one of those hype gyms. Like I'm not going barefaced. I'm wearing at least a concealer. Okay. Something. That's the problem with living in downtown Miami. Like I'm going to see everybody. My... One of my best friends, I'll go to the gym with him Um, after work. Sometimes he goes to that. Maybe I shouldn't give the location away. It's in Midtown. One of those gyms. One of those gyms in Midtown. And it's like, there's literally people like, you have to like walk around people's filming setups. Oh, that's annoying. And I'm like, I don't want to be in the background of your video. Like, you know what? Do you, I support you and like what you're doing and all this stuff. But like, also like, I don't want to be in the background of your video. I feel like sometimes too, people like try to get reactions from people in the background to try to be like, you see the haters in the background. Yeah. Like, I almost feel like they some people like, like search a narrative for that. Of, of the video. Yeah. So it's like they, if they caught you making a face, which I make faces constantly, I'm like Me very too. expressive. And, Me too. And like not even when I'm thinking, like I'm just like always making faces. So like, God forbid I'm in the background of some girl like doing her little like, fitness video and then like they make it like a thing i'm so scared of being caught on like videos now in like this like social media era yeah my face is always screwed same i need to i i need to re-up on my botox because i thought that i was like "Mm, you know what i'm i'm gonna chill like i'm just gonna age like a normal person and not be crazy and like you know do botox and all that Cause I've done it maybe like three times. My sh- completely faded now, and I am gonna make an appointment soon because I cannot. Like I could just feel my face angry. Yeah, <laughs> like you can feel. I can feel when I make a harsh expression. When I was like in maybe like eighteen or nineteen, I was like at my aunt's house. And I made a face and I'll never forget. She goes, you better not, girl, you better fix that face because you, you you're going to get ever wrinkles. Make that face. Yeah, she's like, you're going to give yourself wrinkles making that face. And it was like shrugging my eyebrows or raising my eyebrows or something. And I literally from that moment on, I taught myself not to like make wrinkles in my face if I squeeze my eyebrows together. You see, no 11s. Mm-hmm. I haven't had Botox since June or you will never. I have said this a million times. Also, a pony helps. Though. Pony, pony, yeah. yeah, of course. I said this a million times. I'll, I, I will live and die by this. There is nothing in this world that will shock me enough that will make my eyebrows lift to give me wrinkles in my head. <laughs> you cannot. <laughs> you can't shock me enough. You cannot shock me enough. And God forbid I have to eat my f- words on that. <laughs> 
Um, who else do we have? Oh, you had someone else. All right. Did you follow? Um, we kind of talked about it a little bit. So Amy Song from Song of Style, kind of like OG influencer, speaking of influencers, um, has announced that she's launching a, I guess you would call it a luxury knitwear brand called Amia. Um, a A M I A, and uh, she kind of launched in a, a big way. A M I Y A. A M I Y A. Is that yeah. what I said? Maybe. Yeah. So she launched officially uh, via business of fashion with like a whole write up, which I do think is kind of interesting because it's almost like her explaining herself without actually even having the products out there yet. Yeah. It said. Um, this isn't Song's first clothing line. In 2019, she released a 50-piece collection with Revolve, the retailer's first product collaboration with an influencer. The label is still for sale on Revolve's website today. And she's quoted saying, it was catered towards the Revolve audience. At the end of the day, I just felt like it didn't really represent who I was, Song said. I didn't want to come up with new designs every month. And at Revolve, it's all about newness because that's their business model. I want to be much more intentional. Okay. I've followed her for a long time, really because I do like the interiors of her own home, to which I have to say, girl, you have been living very comfortably on the money you've made from your fast fashion. I see that Mario Bellini couch mm -hmm. that you have in your home and that you fully renovated that home you have in LA. And I was there watching your Instagram stories when you were styling your little revolve outfits. And now you want to like roll that back saying it's not she's your style reneging. and it never has been. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's reneging on it. I And I just think like, I'm sorry, but you're going to need to come with something better if you want somebody to buy a $1,400 half zip from you. Yep. It's extremely expensive And plus, the, yeah, the name's not giving me luxury. And the name, yes, the name. What does I the think, logo look like? I haven't even seen it yet. Um, what bothers me too is like, how are we to trust that like, what you're trying to sell to us now. Like if but, you're walking back the Revolve, exactly. how does that give us any reason to trust you what you're trying to sell? And now the price point is like just astronomical. And I was saying to Lena before we got on the mic, like the picture she chose for the cover of the Business of Fashion article. <coughs> Sorry. I aspirated <laughs> She's wearing a like kind of tie dye looking pink, pinky fade to orange knit with blue jeans and <laughs> sambas, of course. And I'm like, this space is already taken. Mm -hmm. Elder Statesman yeah. is astronomically been priced. Astronomically expensive and been doing those knits. Fun, cool color knits. I can already get this $2,200 cardigan in like an interesting color from Elder Statesman. I saw that she wants creative clothing that would appeal to women like her. Timeless staples that can stay in a closet for uh, year after year. Now in her 30s and as a mother, she finds herself looking and wanting to wear pieces that are going to last forever. And she says that she, while she'll discuss the brand on her Instagram, she won't star in its campaigns. I, don't, I just I don't see it working, you There's, know, like maybe it'll work for for a powerhouse, but I don't think she's a powerhouse. Yeah, there's nothing that especially if she's not going to be the face of the brand, um, especially as an influencer, there's nothing that really ties or makes any type of like relationship or um, personal identity to the brand. There's this guy that's been going on viral on TikTok a lot. He has like a master's degree in marketing and he's kind of been talking about like the decline of certain specific influencers. And a big thing he discusses is when these influencers kind of just do these quote unquote money grabs. And a lot of them is because you as an influencer are a personality. And if you're just trying to sell something that actually has no like connection, um, once you take your face or your name or whatever from it, there's no reason for people to still like continue buying it or like have any relationship to it. He was talking about how Selena Gomez is in talks to like sell rare beauty for like mm -hmm. around like two billion. I saw that. Yeah. 
And he's like, I think that would just be a flop. Yeah, she would take her money and run, but that would hurt her brand because there goes her relatableness. People like inherently dislike billionaires as it is right now in this like climate that we're in. And the really the biggest appeal to the rare beauty brand is that she's attached to it. So once you lose the Selena Gomez aspect of the brand there's really nothing driving keeping it afloat. keeping it afloat yeah i saw that um and another thing is like you could probably never do it again like redo a business yeah yeah you know like you said she loses her credibility yeah like you can't just jump ship. I don't know. I To me, Amy Song um, lost her credibility with the Revolve stuff. Mm-hmm. Like these quotes that she's giving about the Revolve. Yeah. There was better ways to say that. Just being like, I'm a mother now. Um, I have different priorities. My style is different. Things are changing. Not like, I don't relate to this. Like, is never really my style. Yeah, it was off brand. Off well, brand. <laughs> and what that's brand. been your brand for years. Yeah. So what is your brand? Yeah. It's a little confusing. And that's the worst that it can be. It's confusing for the consumer. You know? Yes. Um, and I think that just honestly, people that follow those influencers to the point that they're actually buying things are not in the same tax bracket of people bu- spending two thousand dollars on a knit. Absolutely not. I think a lot of people follow these influencers because their lives are not like those lives, right? Yes. So like, okay, if she's marketing to mothers who want to be able to just choose any staple piece, timeless piece out of the closet, like the mother that wants to buy that is buying Loro Piana. Like, she's not buying... She already has her brand she Mia. goes to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I don't think that that mother is following her. No, I don't think that mother is following her. You know what I think she should have done? Nix the sweaters. No sweaters, babe. Interior design. Because mm. her she home... Probably, she would have killed it. She would have killed it. And I think she actually has a background in interior design prior to being an influencer. The f- Calicotta marble she has... In her kitchen, fire. I think, I think about it all the time. <laughs> I think about it all the time. <laughs> I gotta see that. She should have done a home collection a la um, Montana LaBelle. But it's very true because, okay, you wanna sell high price tag items. What's more high price tag than a sofa? Holy sh. If you are like hardcore rich, you like you drop like a hundred k on a couch. Absolutely, I have some friends that work in the uh, design district, but like what design district was initially made for, which is furniture, furniture <laughs> design. And we, were just, we had lunch the other day, and we we're just talking, and they're like, "Girl, like fifty k on a couch is child's play." Yeah, they're like, "That's nothing." I'm like, "They're like the cloud couch from Restoration Hardware, girl, for peasants." Yeah, that's peasant. Mm-hmm. And that's like 10K. That's a 10K starting. I think you starting. buy it by, it's modular. You buy it by section. It's like three and a half to 5K a Each section. section, yeah. You get it in leather, girl. It's another story. Mm-hmm. They will they will cackle. They say, what is CB2? CB2? Who? Yeah. But uh, listen, Amy Song, call me. <laughs> <laughs> we got ideas. We got ideas. It's not <laughs> sweaters. <laughs> um... You saw that Costco is selling Ozempic? Yeah. Okay, I tried to pull it up and they were like, Costco is now offering weight loss services. Like Weight loss services. Here, I screenshotted it. Um, The wholesale retailer members can subscribe to online healthcare service provider Sesame's weight loss program for a discounted price. But look, it has a photo of Ozempic. Um, Damn. You know, the doctor put my dad on Ozempic. Really? I need to see if I'm allowed working? to say this. <laughs> yes. He's lost 25 pounds. It's been like oh wow, um, a month and a half. My dad's not big, but my dad's really tall. Mm-hmm. But yeah, the doctor wanted him to lose some weight. And it, it works like a charm. I'm like, last time when he first got it, I was like, daddy, give me a shot, please. Look, it says including medication. And then it has a photo of Ozempic. 
Members can pay $179 to join the weight loss program, according to a statement from uh, Costco's partner, Sesame. Here's the thing. The program offers three months of virtual healthcare visits, eating and exercise guidance, and access to medications, including the prescription GLP-1 drugs like Ozempic and Wegovy. Mm. It's medically supervised weight loss. So yes, technically you can sign up for it, but what I'm assuming is that you're going to go in there, you're going to meet with their doctor. And see if you qualify. See if you qualify, and Mm -hmm. then from there you go. It's not like, hey, I'm signing up, and they're just like going to give you some OZMBP, babe. Yeah, offering Um, members access to weight loss programs. Yes, variety of healthcare services, including virtual primary care visits for twenty nine dollars, health checkups with basic lab work for seventy two, and virtual mental health care for seventy nine. So yes, they have this new partnership with Sesame that then has like encapsulated this like weight loss program thing, which obviously that's kind of like a flashier headline. Um, but they've always kind of had that because they've always offered um, eye exams. Oh, I guess. But I am also not a Costco member, so what? I wouldn't know. Are you even an adult girl? I know. That's the rite of passage. I don't want to be an adult. I told you. My mom. You're overpaying for toilet paper. I was going to. Yeah, but they have sheets of sandpaper as toilet paper. No, yes. they have the, they have your fancy the ones, brands. The ones my mom buys me. <laughs> Do you she, like she, the toilet paper at my house? You can be honest. Oh, I don't remember what it is, but I buy the the easy tear ones that it's like scalloped now. It's nice. You are overpaying for toilet paper in this economy. Yeah, I know. Um, well, also, my mom splits toilet paper and paper towel with me whenever she goes to Costco. I got a bag from my mom the other day. It had toilet paper, paper towels, Ferrero Rocher from Valentine's Day. It had my over-ear Bose headphones that I left at my brother's house. It had ginger shots and turmeric shots. And it also had protein uh, yogurt from Costco, like 25 of them. Do you give her money for this or she just gives uh, no, it to you? She just gives it to me. Yeah, that's that's some mom. My swagger comes with, um, I don't want to disclose the hookup, but somebody in the family has access to the paper towels that you find in a public bathroom along with the giant wheels of toilet paper. Oh, those giant wheels are crazy. Mm-hmm. And my swagger says, oh, they're for guests. I said, no, I do not want my guests <laughs> using these. <laughs> Single ply sandpaper on your puss. Bro, <laughs> if you open the cabinet above my fridge or in the closet there or in the garage, like, let- what do you do with them? Because how do you put them out? I have more of the um, the paper towels. OK, OK. Yeah, because then I don't feel so bad in the fancy paper towels. But uh, no, I'll put the I'll put the toilet paper for myself. And if I, if nobody's coming, I'll use it in the guest bathroom because I would feel bad. One time my mom came to visit. She was there for like a day or so. And then she's like, oh, I ran out of toilet paper. And I went in there and I was like, mommy, why didn't you tell me you had this toilet paper in the, she had the sh- the public bathroom toilet paper in the, <laughs> I was like, I would have given you the real stuff. That's for me, not for you. I was like so mortified. She's like, I didn't want that saying. I thought, oh, that's what you use in the house. I'm like, that's embarrassing. Because <laughs> like that role is huge. What dispenser do you put that sh- no, it None. sits on top of the sink. Got it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. My friend is a lawyer. She's an attorney. And so I know this is kind of a little late, but I, I forgot to mention it last week on the podcast. But basically after um, the feds raided Diddy's house, houses mm-hmm. in plural, I reached out to her for statement. Because I knew there was, like, a lot of people that had some questions. And there was, like, kind of, like, misinformation going around. And wasn't he calling the paparazzi on himself? Yes. He's 100% calling the paparazzi on himself. I'm going to learn you guys something right now. If it's on back grid and it looks really good and clean, like Kim Kardashian in Turks and Caicos right now. They called it on themselves. They called it on themselves. If you know anyone that's gone on vacation in Turks, you would know, like, paparazzi would just, like, not just like Mm-mm. roll up there around like where are they hiding in a f- bush all right unless they're at drake's house <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, okay, so basically I asked for comment on as far as where we're standing. People were like, oh, they raided the house, but you know, there was no arrests made. So obviously they didn't find anything. So basically why they raided the houses and that why they did it all kind of like in that planned way is because they're getting to the point in the investigation, they don't want him to be like destroying evidence. So to get in there with the warrants, they're going in there to find evidence before it's destroyed, essentially. Mm -hmm. Um, So that doesn't necessarily mean like there would be an arrest right away. A lot of the times with these kinds of like crimes that they're talking about, which could be like financial type of things, it's going to take time to go through data and all that stuff. So probable cause was what led to the search warrant, um, but they need the evidence for their arrest. So if he's under investigation, it likely will lead to an arrest unless they don't find anything. They also have to factor in if he's a flight risk or not, like if he will flee the country and avoid prosecution. If they execute a search warrant, they've determined he's not. All right, and so I asked her some specific questions that I had seen online that people were a little curious about. I had read somewhere that the house in Miami is actually under his daughter's names. It's not under his names. Mm. So I said, does that actually change his culpability if they find anything in the house? She said, no. If they're after him and he has any quote unquote assets anywhere they can search wherever they think the evidence could be. The only thing about the house being under his daughter's name is that it protects the house from being seized unless she's also committed a crime. A lot of people do that. Basically, you can, as a father, put properties underneath like your, your child's name or your name. wife's name. So if they ever get sued that's um, or, and indicted, those properties aren't associated with them. Right. When like millionaires put things in trust. Yes, it protects right. it. It protects it. Um, now if they find, um, now if they can prove the properties were bought with tainted funds, illegal ways of getting money, then that's a totally different story, Mm. which, you know, I, I don't even know what that would look like. He's had that property for so So long. long. The one in Miami for so long. So long. I remember being like 16 and my cousin was going to Diddy's New Year's Eve party. And I was like, can you take me? And he was like, you really want to come? He was going to take me. And then I ended up not going. Some things are just not meant to happen. Yeah, not when I'm 16. Hell no. <laughs> um, I read that uh, Cassie's now actually working with the feds as well. I saw that. Yeah. Do you think that that puts a target on her? Do we think that Diddy is a dangerous man? I think so. As far as like, you know, putting a hit on someone that's cooperating with the FBI? I think so. I mean, if you look back and this might be like me putting my tinfoil hat on, but um, any person that he used to be associated with that has tried to come out and write like a memoir, for example, they're all dead. And when um, Kim Porter died, his ex-wife, Um, they investigated her death and they ruled it a homicide. Um, and then the person that actually did the autopsy, he's like, he was a really well-known, um, coroner, coroner Mm -hmm. in, uh, California. He ended up dead. And then they kind of like, did he had like his own people re-examined? Basically. They said like his own people went back and like, did an autopsy and like it was like inconclusive and blah, blah, blah Mm. Um, for Kim Porter. So it was like this one person that's like an expert in the field came up homicide and now it's coming up inconclusive. I know like Kimora Lee Simmons was like a huge advocate for like something isn't right. Mm -hmm. Um, And then another friend of theirs that was like, that came up modeling with them. She was trying to write um, a tell all and she ended up dead as well. Another one, person associated with Diddy uh, ended up dead after like trying to write a memoir. It's just like it's fishy, fishy, weird stuff. I think like a big red flag is that in Cassie's filing that she wrote that he blew up Kid Cudi's car. Mm. 
Yeah. Allegedly, it's I giving, guess you still have to say. It's giving danger. It's giving danger, but I think what kind of validates anything that was stated, in my opinion, as not a legal expert, what validates anything that was stated in those filings is the fact that he paid her. A day after. Yeah. Within 48 hours, he paid her. So that's kind of unheard of. I don't know. I think like, I sometimes I read the comment sections and people are like, this is like, how could they do a search warrant? And you see, they haven't arrested him. They haven't found him in any, anything yet, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, have you never watched like a, a cop show in your life? Like Dateline? The, <laughs> the fact that they even have a search warrant means that there's something there. Yeah. It means that they have is probable, it probable cause. cause. So I think we'll see. Um, I think it's going to be kind of like a long game before like charges. It's not going to be some like boom, 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 like right in a row um, because I think they're going to have a lot of stuff to go through. I think they're going to get him on like weird data. They're going to have to do the flight tracking and all that, shit, you know? Yeah. In the meantime, he's riding bike around Miami. I mean, he's calling... We've Back never grid. seen him doing those things. We've never seen him doing those things ever in Miami. You would never see him out by himself ever, ever. in his life. And he's lived there for, oh my God, like 30, 30, years, 30 years probably yeah. at this point. No, I cannot believe he has the audacity in like 2024 to be calling backward, acting like it's like all natural and he's smiling at the camera. Whatever. I'm like very interested to see how this plays out. My attorney friend also said for all those interested that she's going to try to get a copy of the search warrant and that she'll come back with comment. Mm. <laughs> so I'm like, please do. Very. I would be excited to hear about that. Mm-hmm. So. All right. There wasn't any award shows or any premieres or anything this week. Um, but I did read somewhere that the 80s power shoulder is going to trend this fall. How do you feel about that? Okay. So I think I sent you this reel on Instagram, but um, it was like this girl that she goes to like the thrift and she buys those like 80s and 90s dresses. Those ones that like, if you think about it, like your mom used to put in for like, mm -hmm. like Noche Buena when you were little. Yes. <laughs> um, it could be like a power shoulder dress or blazer. Yep. Right. And she takes them to the tailor and she has them made into tops. Mm. So like... I just thought it was like genius. Yeah. I was like obsessed with the idea because you get these like fun going out tops and it's like these custom super frilly. Yeah. Just like colorful, shiny tops. I loved it. I was like, I want to go to the, the thrift over here. But every time I go to the thrift over here, I walk in and I'm just like the smell just hits me. In I'm the like, face. I don't even want to be here. No, I can't. Anytime I walk into like a thrift or like a TJ Maxx, I automatically have to poop. We got, oh my God. <laughs> it's such a thing, same. right? Same. I, I walk into Michael's and for some reason, I always have to go to the bathroom in Michael's. I feel like they try to get you out and fast. And Joanne's yeah. is the same oh, thing. I love Joanne's. Um, which I heard, by the way, that they might be going bankrupt. Yes. So they're filing for Chap well, it depends on the chapter. So that's the thing. If it's chapter seven versus chapter 11, um, sometimes when you file, they just basically get bought by like some private equity bullshit. Um, and then, you they'll know, continue to be, they'll continue Joanne's. to be in business. Yeah, yeah. But I pray to God. I, I love Joanne's. I like have their app. I use their coupons. I walk to the store. The store's right here. It's right here. Yeah. I love Joanne's. Yeah. I love Joanne's too. Um, what else? Oh, the Bed Bath & Beyond dilemma that they completely just closed, seized all f Bed Bath & Beyond. That's weird. And they're selling weird online. Like they kind of are doing like a Wayfair thing on the internet now with the Bed Bath & Beyond website. Um, I used to hit up Bed Bath & Beyond all the time in college because the 20% off coupons never expire. Mm -hmm. And the, Even though they have an expiration date, they yep, never expire. They never expire. Probably in my office right now, I still have a stack of them from like 2011. And um, the ones here in Florida, they had like a huge like CVS almost type of situation in the front. Mm. In Connecticut, they don't have that with like all the soaps and like all the toiletry oh, shit. yes, yes. Yeah. Like for, um, body wash, shampoo, yeah, all that stuff. Like personal care stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I would always go in there for racks. 
their racks were 80 bucks and they were like one level up from like uh target's racks they're like on a container store level of racks container store can go to hell with yeah their prices. they're so expensive they can get a grip um yeah so i was a i was a bby no, you a BBY, not, not your BBY, BBW. B, 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 B and B. B, B and B. Oh, BBW. What am I talking about? BBY is Best Buy. That's why I said it. I used to work at Best Buy. And that's oh, you the, did? That's the, yeah, that's the thing for it. BBY. BBY. Um, you are a BBY, you BB girl. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I mean, back to the 80s power shoulder. I don't know... I think I think there there needs to be a new reiteration of it mm-hmm. because I don't know if it's gonna be a '80s power suit. Um, Saint Laurent did those huge shoulders with the pencil skirts recently. Yeah, yeah, for and they did form. men's too. Yeah, Th- their they did men's it for both. Their men's ones were pretty power suit ish, yeah, right? They did Zoot huge suit type. <laughs> I wish it was power suits with slutty men's tops. Oh yeah, it was. <laughs> um we'll see. I have broad shoulders as it is, kind of. So I don't know if I would I don't know if I would uh get down with that. I used to love those. Remember that trend where it was like those muscle tees with the shoulder pads in them? Yes, yes. I loved that one. You look. loved that one? I thought it was like I never bought one. Pinnacle, everyone chic. had everyone I got them had on them. sale for like five bucks at like nasty gal. Remember nasty oh, gal? Wow. Yeah. Um, so uh, I still want to try that dress thing from the, I want to try the dress thing. Maybe we could do a thrift store run and like do some content. Yeah. Show the people what we find. Yes. Content creators for life. Show the people how we flip the thrift. All right. Listen, our question question of of the week. week. Boom, boop. We want to thank you guys so much for your listener questions. We love you so much. Um, We appreciate your participation. Being so involved. Being so involved. Clicking the links on our stories, Uh, which leads you to our podcast. Like and subscribe. um, Yeah, guys, please engage with our content. Please engage with us. Please click on our links. Um, and we can always accept your questions via DM at it's not that serious, the pod, um, or you can send them through email at it's not that serious this week at gmail.com. Um, and this week our question is, would you date someone younger than you? Hmm. No. Okay. I, I, I tried to go on a couple dates when I was dating, um, you know, on the apps. Um, let's say if I was 30, I was putting my threshold at like 27, Oof. you know? Um, and then I went on a couple dates with guys that were like 28, let's say. It's not worth it. Don't do it. If you're not in I your don't 30s, recommend it. I like literally can't even look in your direction. I don't recommend it. I, then after I did that, I was like, okay, I'm putting my shit up to like 45. Yeah. <laughs> like if you're younger than me, I'm going to fixate on that always. Cause I'm be like, Oh, you don't have these same shared life experiences as me because you didn't live as long as me. It's like all I would talk about. But yeah. a 22 year old called me hot as f- the other day at work. And I was like, I f- I'll take it. He was like, I, I told him, I'm like, I'm old. Don't talk to me like that. <laughs> and he was like, how old are you? Like 26. And I was like, Exactly. Exactly. Twenty six. But you know what? If I let's say, like, God forbid, I had to be on my second marriage or something, and I'm like, whatever, I could be eating my words. I might go young. Yes, because you know what? The the older they get, the less sex drive they have. Oh, it's that's true. true. That's very true. I could be like share, and you know what? I actually love the way that her boyfriend looks at her. If you look at the way he smiles at her, it's so cute. That couple, okay. I wish that Cher and him were together in Cher's youth. Yeah, for life. You know what I mean? Like, I wish, like, they were of the same age, like, as hot as they are to each yeah, other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? I feel like, I don't know, I could be totally off base because apparently what I've thought about Bad Bunny is off base from what I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> That's a story for a paywall. But um, 
I don't know. I just feel like the way he looks at her in videos and stuff and the way he smiles at her, he had like with such admiration and love. Yeah. And it's like, it so does look cute. very sweet. It does so look very sweet. sweet. In my experience, when I went on those couple of dates, like both of them were like, yeah, just let me know if you need like an assistant. Well, oh, and I was weird. like, huh? Is this a like they wanted to work with you? Yeah. Like, I'm like, is this a date or a f- job, job interview? interview? That's weird. Yeah, it's weird. And I've found that, you know, that's what happens when you're a younger guy that's not completely established in your career. Yeah. I've dated one guy younger than me and he was only a year younger than me, but maybe because we were like in our early 20s and his brain wasn't fully developed yet. I just felt like I was so much more like ahead of him maturity wise. And like that, I always had a hard time with, but you know, physically we connected very well, but otherwise, like when we would try to have combo, I'm like, Oh my God, like it's like talking to a child with you, Mm. like grow up. Yeah. So maybe like, I'm always talking on age gaps. I'm fine with age gaps with consenting partners, as long as we're not like in the teens like if you're in the yeah. teens and the 40, like Kristen Cavallari with that young guy, I don't know if you've been seeing all that stuff. That's like, oof, I don't like that age gap at all. It's like I haven't seen it. 20 years, <laughs> I could be exaggerating. But like, I mean, consenting adults, you know, just do your thing. Just yeah. Have sex, have if fun. If it's for you, it's for you. But And if it's for free, it's for me. Mm-hmm. Um, what's going on? Do you have a throwback segment for me? I do have a throwback segment for you, um, which I actually found hilarious. So April 7th, 1969 is actually considered the internet's birthday. Wait, 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 wait. Mm -hmm. April 7th, 1969 1969. is considered the internet's birthday? Yep. The birth of the internet. April 7th, 1969. Damn. I know. I thought it was going to be much closer to now. Um, So it's obviously not the internet we know today. Right. And I'm sure it was an entire building of computers that were powering one website. Yeah. My mom used to always (laughs) say that because like back, I don't know, before we were born, she worked at this... um, I think it was a bank. Sorry, mommy. I know my mom listens. And she said, oh, the computers were like the size of the room. Yeah. Like in Manhattan, like the whole room was computers. Yeah, it was a whole room of computers. Um, so yeah, April 7th, 1969, the first RFC or request for comments document was published. And what an RFC actually does is something hard and math like. But um it's like early computing engineers share used it to share data and um ideas to lay the groundwork for the internet as a whole. Wow. Interesting. Incredible. It's strange because, like, my parents didn't have a job where they needed to use computers, um, and neither did my grandparents. So, I mean, really the only person that I, only generation that has used computers in my family at a young age or in a profession uh, was me. Maybe. I'm trying to think because my mom worked at a drag cleaners. Mm -hmm. I don't think they use computers there. No, maybe just like some type of filing system. And my dad has always, my dad went to uh, tech school for HVAC. Oh, So did they use computers at his college? I'm not sure. I should ask him actually. They might have used those diagnostic kind of computers like they plug in the cars. I could be like Mm, giving ACs too much brain power. Like, you know, that it will tell you what's wrong. (laughs) Yeah. I don't know. But like to have an office job where like your mom said, like they had a designated room for the computers. Yeah. Yeah. My mom. It's hard to understand. For me and my brain, computers are like, you know, like early 90s, let's say. Yeah. I remember our desktop computer. I remember Windows 95 was the bomb. Mm -hmm. I remember calling someone's house and if they're on the internet, you would get that. Yeah. Definitely remember that. Um, I remember when my sisters first downloaded music illegally for the first time mm-hmm. from um, like Napster. And then because I'm younger than them, I never used those. I only used like LimeWire. Mm. And like. I definitely use Napster. Yeah, because you're like my sister's age. Mm-hmm. So even that. But yeah. And then my dad's an engineer. So he's always like been into that kind of stuff. So. 
But I wonder if, like, what, for example, when your dad went to college, were they, like, studying on computers yet? Probably not, right? I'd have to ask him. I, I wonder remember. if, like, when, when was, like, the death, when was the desktop itself? When was the birth of that? I want to know that. Well, wasn't it, like, Steve know. Jobs and, like, the garage and all that shit? No, it would have been Microsoft. Or Bill Gates, Bill Gates. Yeah. I wonder if Bill Gates, or was it, like, IBM? Probably IBM, right? That sounds like better, right? <laughs> um, what are your ins and outs of the week? Okay, ins and outs. Um, my in, I realized, is that I'm going to order a second ID to just have on hand. You know, that's illegal. Damn, is it? Yeah, I can't think be. it's illegal. It can't be. Because. Like, what if I just order an identification card? Not a license. Listen, I'm not telling you not to do it because if you open a wallet I have in there, I have literally eight IDs because I I got a ticket when I first moved to Miami for not changing my address because you can get a ticket for that if you don't do it within like six months of living in an address. And they don't ask for them back. So every time I would get a new one with from a different addresses, I just have them. So I have like literally eight of them. Well, I only have one. And I just went through an issue where I thought I lost my ID and I didn't have my ID. And I... Order it. Yeah. Just go on the little so DMV I'm website. Gonna order, I'm going to order a second ID, even if it's just like an ID and not a license, because now you've made me aware that I that is illegal and I don't do illegal things. If you're a cop, we don't. We don't do illegal things. If you're things. a snitch, shut up. Um, and then my outs is being unprepared for the cold. Cold where? I'm so annoyed. I checked the weather when I went to Charlotte this week. Mm. And I'm like, oh, that's okay. Like 67. It was fine. It dropped to like 40 something. I only had one hoodie. That's too cold. It's too cold. And I wasn't prepared. And I was so upset with myself. And just now I went to a screening for Miami Film Festival it was freezing in there. It must have been like 40 degrees in there. No, that's like, I'm sorry, baby. That's rookie mistake. Always rookie bring mistake. a sweater to the movie theater. I know. I was like, do you think it's going to be cold? Hell but it, yeah. it wasn't the movie theater. It was um, at the Adrian Arch uh, concert mm -hmm. hall. In my head, I was like, it's going to be packed, but it wasn't packed. So I need to be more prepared. My ends changes accepting changes um changes are good i'm having gonna be having some very major changes in my work coming this next week and um yeah this is the year of changes i love that i want to hear all about it maybe I, maybe we'll hear about it once it's once it's done yeah and then my out is this Injury. I re-injured. Um, I guess I'm calling it a groin injury now. It's kind of embarrassing. I was feeling a little bit better because I was going to physical therapy and I was like, F it, let's sprint. I'm an athlete. And Who'd you go sprint with? With my trainer. Okay. It's my fault. It's not his fault. I was like, I'm feeling good. Let's try. I should not have done Did it. you sprint outside in the track on no, the treadmill? on the treadmill. Mm -hmm. I have a hard time catching a proper stride on the treadmill too. Do you sprint with the treadmill on? Mm-hmm. Yeah. My trainer has me sprint with the treadmill off. Oh, really? They have those special um, ones. What are they called? There's, Yeah, they're the ones that move. They're with curved. Your, yeah. yeah. But, uh, but yeah, so my body has betrayed me yet again. I'm going back to the physical therapist tomorrow, and we're going to get ahead of this. Mm, I hope it gets better. It's, like, so discouraging, but I hope I have a better update for you guys next week. And this is 30-something. I know. My knee's clicking. I can't turn my head too fast. Same. I, if I nap on the couch, I'm my neck is screwed. Literally. Um, but life is great. But otherwise, <laughs> life is amazing. Otherwise. Great. Love it. So happy to be here every day. Yes. Um, I don't know why this just came to my head. Feel the rain on your skin. <laughs> no one else can feel it for you. I have a I have a playlist that I call the Limited Two playlist. Oh, I love Limited Two. Their little underwears were so cute. I worked there for my first that was my first retail job. 
And so I made a playlist. I'm going to send it to you. I'm going to send you my limited two playlist. Oh, my God. That will make me so happy. All right, guys. Um, we did it again. We want to thank you guys so much every week for tuning in. Um, we're, we're becoming besties with you guys. I know we are besties. I love interacting with you guys on Instagram, um, hearing what you guys think of new episodes. If you guys want to hear certain topics, please let us know. And as always, we love you. You can follow us on It's Not That Serious, the pod on all platforms, TikTok and Instagram. We should hopefully have some videos at some point because we actually did record video this last, not this one, the last one. And if we have any friends out there that want to record video of us and help us on our journey, please feel free to reach out. Please, We love to work with new creatives. And um, yeah, let's support each other. Please. Um, you can follow me on all platforms at Drea the Angel and you can follow Lena at Lena Gosh on all platforms. And just remember geese, guys, guys and girls, girls and gays and days, um, and diva queens. Most importantly, it's It's not not that that serious. Join us each and every week here on the Dear Young Queen Network. And be sure to follow and subscribe to It's Not That Serious so you never miss an episode.